Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest updates that's going to help to cement Mac gaming's future forever, and that is Crossover version 23.5. So if you didn't already know, Crossover is a method of running Windows games on the Mac. However, for the longest time, it's been limited to DirectX 11 games and below. However, with the new 23.5 update, Crossover now officially integrates Apple's game porting toolkit directly into the application. This means that we can finally play hundreds of complex complex graphically intensive DirectX 12 games on Apple Silicon hardware. And this includes games like Elden Ring, Diablo 4, Hogwarts Legacy, and even the new 2.0 update of Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. And how is this even possible? In a previous video, I talked about how Apple's D3D Metal, the kind of magic which allows DirectX 12 games to run on Apple Silicon hardware, could not be distributed due to an overly restrictive license which Apple applied to the project. However, in Game Porting Toolkit's latest 1.04 beta release, Apple changed the terms of the license, and now D3D Metal can be distributed in projects like Crossover. And this is great because Crossover has many advantages over using Apple's plain game porting toolkit. Firstly, Crossover has a much better user interface, which is far better than game porting toolkit's command line interface. Everything is handled through wizards, buttons, and installers, and much less can go wrong when you're using Crossover. Furthermore, Crossover bundles the latest version of Wine version 8, whereas if you're using vanilla game porting toolkit, then you're going to be stuck on version 7 and you won't have access to the latest fixes. And furthermore, Crossover has done a hell of a job updating compatibility for launchers. So this includes the Steam Launcher, Ubisoft, and EA Desktop, which all work far better through Crossover than they do through plain game porting toolkit. So it sounds like there are lots of advantages for using Crossover, but are there any disadvantages? Well, for one thing, Crossover is a paid application, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing. When Apple released the game porting toolkit for free, one of the main worries that I had was that it would be a free competitor to Crossover and that it would eventually starve Crossover's funding and this would in turn affect the future of wine gaming for everyone. And that's because if you buy Crossover, you're directly funding the development of the open source project Wine. You should know that paying for Crossover directly funds the open source Wine project. This is the main magic which allows games to run through Proton on the Steam Deck on SteamOS. And it's also the fundamental technology which allows DirectX 12 games to run on Apple's game porting tool. It. Therefore, if you want to see more future compatibility of Windows games on the Mac, then you should definitely consider buying Crossover. You should really think of it more like a donation to the future of Mac gaming. And if you're worried about cost, then make sure to click on the link at the top of the description for a 23% coupon code. This coupon code is only valid until the 17th of October, so make sure to check it out now. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to show you from start to finish how to install the new version of Crossover 23.5, how to enable game porting toolkit and how to get a game like Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 working on your Apple Silicon Mac. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of Crossover Plus, which comes with 12 month support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here. And then you're going to get a 20% discount. And right now you can get a 23% discount if you use the coupon code GameMode3. This is valid until October the 17th. And anyway, once we're ready, you can click the Buy Now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the Try Now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to go to Finder and then we're going to go to our Downloads folder. We want to find our Crossover zip file here. So all we need to do is double click. It's going to extract. And then we have the Crossover app here. We're going to drag and drop this and put this into our Applications folder. And once that's copied over, we'll click on Applications and then we're going to scroll until we find the Crossover app. So go ahead and double click. Here it's saying Crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open? Press Open. So once this is open, we've got the option to install applications and games. So the first thing we're going to do is to download Steam. So click on the Steam icon here, we'll do a search for it. Then we're going to click on Install Steam. It's going to download and install Steam into a brand new Windows 10 64-bit bottle. Here we're just going to say yes to installing these various fonts. A lot of the progress is going to happen in the background. 
you don't have to click anything in particular. So now we're going to go through the Windows theme setup. So just click next, select your language, select the default installation. Now we're going to allow this to run Steam. So this is downloading a 300 megabyte update. Just let that finish. So now we have the Steam login screen. We can log in with our username and password, or we can scan the QR code with the Steam app on a smartphone. So now we're logging in. And now we're in the Windows version of Steam. And if you want to progress any further, what I'd also advise you to do is to shut down Steam so that we can change some of the graphics settings within Crossover. Basically, we need to quit out of Steam, press exit here. So back within Crossover, we're going to click on our Steam bottle that we just created. And we have a few options here. So I do recommend turning on eSync, especially for Counter-Strike 2. So I'm going to turn that on and reboot the bottle and enable eSync. And then we have two options here, which we can both run the game through. So D3D Metal, which uses Game Porting Toolkit. This translates DirectX 11 and 12 into Metal. Or we have the option here for DXVK, which translates DirectX 11 into Vulkan, and then Molten VK turns that into Metal. You should experiment with which one works best for you. I'm going to be testing out D3D Metal, as this tends to work a lot better with DirectX 11 and 12 games. So now what we're going to do is to go ahead and reopen Steam and go to Library, and then do a search for Cyberpunk 2077. So if you haven't purchased this already, then make sure to add it to your Steam library. And then we're going to go ahead and download this. So we're going to select this computer here and then click install. And then go ahead and select your location and then press the install button. Here we're going to agree to the end user licensing agreement, press accept. And then we're going to let this start its download process and installation. So once the game's fully downloaded, we can go ahead and press the play button and then it's going to go and launch. So it might download some dependencies like the Steam Works common redistributables. Just wait for that to finish. And then it's going to go ahead and launch the game. So you're going to find that the game actually runs pretty well, especially on higher end Apple Silicon chips. So this is the M1 Max chip running this at 1080p at medium settings. And we're getting a pretty admirable frame rate Considering the fact that we're running through game porting toolkit crossover, it's a Rosetta 2 Intel game being translated onto the ARM chip. The code is Windows code running on macOS and DirectX 12 is being translated on the fly directly into Metal. So performance isn't as good as it would be on a similarly priced PC, but it's very admirable for a Mac. Anyway, this is how you get Cyberpunk 2077 running on Apple Silicon hardware. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.